how the patriarchy is leaving men behind. Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. A hopefulist is the woman who takes control of her life to feel vibrant, alive, and passionate. I help uncover the limiting beliefs that have held women back for so long so you can step into your true, authentic self and live the life that is truly meant for you. Because you matter. Hey, how do you like that? Brand new intro. So exciting. Moving and shaking here at the Hopefulist, getting some new things done. So I hope you like the new intro. I'm very excited about it. Starting with the quote of the day. Yes, it always comes down to this. You are a badass. You were one when you came screaming onto this planet, and you are one now. The universe wouldn't have bothered with you otherwise. You can't screw up so majorly that your badassery disappears. It's who you are. It's who you always will be. It is not up for negotiation. So always remember how badass you truly are. So doing some deep dive in today into the patriarchy. Now, we always talk about the patriarchy and women find that word to be not so great. We don't love the patriarchy. It has created a bunch of rules uh, that don't benefit us as women at all. And it's not really just hurting women. The patriarchy is actually hurting men as well. Now, initially, and for hundreds and hundreds of years, thousands of years, men's job were the three Ps. The three Ps were to protect, provide, and procreate. They were to protect the women, provide for the women, and procreate with women. That is no longer the case. We don't need protection like we have in the past from wild animals, from warriors showing up outside our door. Uh, yeah, we still need to be protected in certain circumstances. We know that. Uh, we would much rather walk down the street at night with a man by our side than to do it alone. Um, but that's really just to protect us from other men, not from a saber-toothed tiger. Um, we really don't need men to provide for us anymore. Most women, not most women, a lot of women are providing for themselves. They're independent. Um, they don't need to depend on somebody else for them to live their lives. And when it comes to procreating, some women choose not to have children. Some men choose not to have children. And in some instances, women are having children on their own, independent of a man. They can go to a sperm bank and get inseminated. They don't actually have to be in a marriage or a relationship in order to become a mother. So where does this leave men? Where does this leave men? If they've been taught their whole lives that their job is to protect, provide, and procreate, and women no longer need that, I would think that leaves them with a bit of an identity crisis. And I think that's what's happening. We are seeing all of these stories and studies about how men are lonely. There is a crisis of lonely men. I won't even get into the disparity of how when women are lonely, it's not considered a crisis. It's considered their fault. But when men are feeling lonely and dating is down for men, it becomes a crisis. But here is the issue when it comes to men, the patriarchy, and the lack of dating options that they're finding is that women want more from men than they have in the past. As mentioned, 
men were needed in the past for protection, to provide for us, to procreate with us. And since that is no longer the case, men truly need to come up with something more to offer women. And men have never been encouraged to be more. They've been encouraged to work. They've been encouraged to make money. They've been encouraged to get married and have a family. Um, But women are doing a lot of interior work. We're working on ourselves. We're working on our lives. We want our lives to be better. So we dive deep into what is holding us back. And most men don't do that. Most men find that looking in and trying to find other ways to connect with people, something that they don't want to do. I have just recently seen a clip from a TED Talk from Brene Brown. If you don't know Brene Brown, um, she has a number of books and often speaks uh, typically on the topic of being vulnerable and how that can really serve you in your life, being vulnerable. And she is talking about a commercial, one that I have always remembered and has still sung from time to time. This commercial was out when I was a kid, so it was either the 70s or the 80s, somewhere around there. But this commercial uh, was so memorable, I guess, because like I said, here it is 40 years later, and I can still remember. So she uses this commercial as an example of what women are up against. It's the Anjali commercial. And I hope you remember it too, because in the commercial, she is saying, the woman is saying, I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and never ever let you forget you're a man. Because I'm a woman, Anjali. Now, she goes on to discuss that commercial and says that, you know, this is what women were expected to do. It all. I can bring home the bacon, go to work. I can fry it up in a pan. I'm still going to cook for you. And I'm still going to make sure you feel like a man. She said, I don't know how many perfumes that actually sold, but I am sure that it sold a lot of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. So she said, this is what women are up against. And then she compared it to men. What are men's biggest fear? Because the woman's biggest fear is not being able to do all, all of those things. Men's biggest fear is to be seen as weak, right? To be seen as weak. Because they just haven't had a lot of expectations on them aside from the protect, provide, procreate. So when they weren't able to protect, provide, or procreate, they were typically seen as weak. What do you think of when you think of a weak man? Somebody who won't stand up for himself, stand up for you. Um, Somebody who lets a woman tell them what to do. Uh, There's all kinds of things that can label a man as weak. So this is some of what men are up against when it comes to the patriarchy. And what in essence is happening is since women don't need men like they have in the past for protection, providing, and procreating, We want something else. We want something that they can offer us that will add to our lives. Because we don't need you anymore. We still want you. But you have to give us something that will add to our lives. We're not just going to take you because you can do the three Ps. We don't need you for that anymore. What we want is companionship. What we want is somebody who 
understands us and listens to us and doesn't put a whole bunch of demands on us. You know, I often, uh, I don't often talk about my own relationship because I've often viewed my husband as a saint. Um, my husband, I don't need him to protect and procreate with me. We do not have children. That's not going to happen. Uh, he does provide for me, uh, but I don't need him to. If I needed to provide for myself, I have the tools and the skills to do that. I have chosen to spend my life with this man because he's incredibly generous. He is super sweet. He is the most thoughtful person I have ever met. He is funny and he is fun. And we just have a great time together. You know, we have one of those really goofy relationships where I'll just be sitting on the couch and I'll just sing the Anjali song to him. You know, we often make fun of a lot of commercials on TV. We just start singing songs from the past. The other day, we were on our way to the grocery store. And, you know, this is thanks to me because I was such a Brady Bunch crazed hound growing up. I still know every single song by heart and every single storyline by heart. Uh, but something usually tips it off. And, and I would often sing things that I would be reminded of just in the midst of conversation. So I must have said something to the effect of, you know, are we going to keep on doing that? And he's like, we're going to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on dancing all through the night. We are so corny and goofy, but boy, do we have fun. You know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody who's thoughtful and um, affectionate and we want to be we want to be made to feel like we are important not because we clean the house or take care of the kids or help uh when it comes to bringing home the bacon or providing for the family we want to be special and we want to be with someone who is going to not only make us feel special but truly believes that we are special and I know that can be very rare. But as women have evolved, we've done a lot of inner work. You know, we, we've figured out the things that we have been taught in our childhood that has held us back in our lives. And we have delved into that to try and dissect it, to try and have a more vibrant life where men are not only not encouraged to do that, I feel they are looked down upon for doing that. But that's what is going to get you dates. You have to find out what it is that you can offer a woman that she doesn't have. I'm not talking about the three Ps. I'm talking about companionship and love and the ability to make her feel special. And men, and it's not even your fault. It's a result of the patriarchy. You have never been taught that these things are important. Because as long as you had the three Ps, that's all you needed. Right? So, women have a part in this too. There are often times, and I've seen it on social media, I've heard it talked about on talk shows, um, when men do try to open up, women will often shame them. Women will often think certain things about them. If they see a man crying, or if they see a man get really uh, vulnerable about something, they look a little less manly in our eyes. And again, that is a result of the patriarchy. That is what we have been taught. Not just men have been taught that they have to be 
uh, brave and not be seen as weak. Women have also been taught that men cannot be seen as weak. So we can't judge a man when he is being vulnerable, when he is opening up. And that brings me to something that I just read recently that we don't control our thoughts because that's what a lot of women have said. Well, I I didn't want to judge him for it, but I just, I don't know. It just was weird and I, I I just thought differently about them. Okay, here's the thing. We don't control our thoughts. That is true. Thoughts just pop into our head. What we do control is our beliefs. And again, we have been taught that men are to never be seen as weak. So what do we need to do? We need to change our beliefs about masculinity. Men need to do that as well. But when they try to do that, we can't shame them for it. So what we need to try to work on is expanding our definition of masculinity. For everyone's sake. So men really need to find something else that they can bring to the table that a woman will be attracted to. And again, this goes back to the topic. This is a result of the patriarchy. This is what the patriarchy has dictated to men. And for the past million years, this has served men well. This is why they're not encouraged to think and be emotional and all that stuff because that that wasn't part of their job part of their job was just to protect provide and procreate not that that's not a lot it is but other than that the woman was responsible for everything else and that is just no longer the case so if men are going through a crisis of being lonely of not being able to get dates It's time to start working on yourself and figure out what else you have to offer a woman. Because women have been doing this work. We've been doing this work for decades. And I've even heard some say that in response to the Me Too movement that started in 2017, was that going on six years now, that men now view feminism negatively. Well, because it's hurting them. It's, it's stopping people like Harvey Weinstein. You know, he's just one of many. He's the one we know of. This kind of stuff has been going on all over the place. And it wasn't just Harvey Weinstein that was discovered uh, during the Me Too movement. It was a ton of people. You know, I'm not going to name them all, but, you know, there are people on shows that are no longer on shows because of accusations. So it's a little bit of a pushback to view feminism as something that's negative because... That part of feminism, the Me Too movement, set men back. It showed men that women were not going to take it anymore. And so there are a lot of men that view feminism as a negative thing. Women aren't going to like that. (laughs) I'll tell you that. Most women are not going to like that. Uh, Women have come a long way. And the last thing that most women want is to go backwards. So if you want to be with a modern woman, you have to come with modern ideals. It's my two cents. That is my two cents. So, like I said, men, you have to do the work. 
you have to start looking inside to discover what else you have to offer. And really, isn't this a better thing? Wouldn't you rather be with a woman who truly wants to be with you rather than someone who is being with you because she needs you to provide, to protect, and procreate? You know, this is a good thing for men, and I know that they're not going to view it that way. But this is how you're going to evolve as a person and step into better, more meaningful relationships. And we as women have to let them. We have to let them be vulnerable with us to share their feelings and their thoughts and don't judge them. And we do that by expanding our belief about what masculinity is. Both sexes need to do that. We've got a long way to go, ladies and gentlemen. We sure do. But step by step, well, pick by pick, we're going to get there. I have faith. I have faith. Things are all going to work out, and they're going to work out soon. I have to be positive about there, about all of that, because if not, I'm just going to cry. So, with that said, if you like today's episode, please, please leave me a review, share it with your friends, and make sure you are subscribed or following the podcast, because if you are, then you will be the first to know when a new episode drops, and I don't want you to miss one single second. So, along with my new intro there is a new outro as well. And I'm going to try and time it out there pretty precisely. Go on out there and be badass. I'm always cheering you on. Thank you for listening to The Hopefulist. Please visit my website at hopefulist.com. And always remember, you 